Web development is dead. Very controversial topic today. Web development is dead. I have gathered a few thoughts today. Looking at the current market, looking at my learning curve versus the learning curve that people have today and the advent of AI and this topic sort of made some sense to me. Controversial topic, not exactly true, sort of a clickbait. But in this video, I want to talk about my thoughts around where the market was, by market I mean what was coding a few years ago and what it might turn into now. More specifically in the context of the industry, especially if you want to get hired, how things are changing and what I would do today if I was in your shoes and what I am doing currently in my shoes. Cool. Let's get right into the video. I feel web dev is dead because anyone can build a website. Today, it's very easy to build a website through no code tools, which okay could have been a fad. But the fact that AI can spit out a website better than most people can write in like a three days span of time. That's scary for a web developer for their job. Anyone and most specifically AIs are better than humans generally faster at something they know very well. If they know how to build websites, if you can train them well or a bunch of aesthetically looking websites, they will understand how to write code. This will only get better probably in the next three to four months. In the next three to four months, we are going to see very smart AIs to which you describe a website and they spit that out. Why is that? The reason is it's easy to build a website. I am seeing this in the course that I am teaching. Things that I did not know until my third year, fourth year of college, people are able to grasp instantly. I don't know if they're taking AI self, most probably not. I'm just teaching them. During the class, I'm taking things slow. And around 95% of the class understands single threaded nature, asynchronous nature of JavaScript, something that took me two years to understand. More than this, I noticed another trend in India on my YouTube channel, which is my YouTube channel initially was around IITJ. And when I came back to YouTube, I thought, let's garner some audience again. Let's release IITJ videos. I released one video and it got a lot of hate. People were smart. People were like, what do I do with this information that you went to an IIT or your story around an IIT? Teach me how to learn. Teach me how to create a website or teach me how to code. So the Indian audience generally is becoming smarter, which is great. The number of people that used to appear for ITJ used to be 12 lakh, 14 lakh back in the day when I was preparing. It's around 6 to 8 lakh now. People understand that engineering degrees in physics, chemistry, maths are not getting you jobs. And generally, the audience is becoming very smart. Everyone knows how to code. Everyone is running behind the bandwagon of coding. And now you have another competitor amongst the people that you had to compete to, which is AI. Fundamentals are important. AI is there. But if your fundamentals are right, you can use it as an intern. I am sure there are people out there right now, singular people who are working in three, four jobs and are able to easily manage it because they know the fundamentals. They can ask ChatGPT to write the code. Even if it's buggy code, they can fix it. And hence, they are currently making a lot of money. Eventually, this market will saturate and at some point, people will realize that this is the optimal speed to make websites today with the help of AI. But right now, there's an arbitrage. The arbitrage being few people know this and are, I'm sure, making a lot of money because their fundamentals are right. You cannot do this if your fundamentals aren't right. Let's leave this slide. Discord bot delegation. I want to share a personal story here. I recently released a paid course and we wanted to make sure only people who have paid can get into Discord. I delegated this task to a person who works with me and he used ChatGPT to write the code. So we were very happy. He's 18 years old and he, I was very surprised he could write and understand everything that's required to build a bot like this. But he mostly delegated to ChatGPT and his fundamentals aren't great right now because while well, he's still learning, in fact, he hasn't really coded much before this. He gave me the code and we deployed it and it broke. Why did it break? It broke because he was DMing everyone, asking them for their details, things like their emails and then checking whether or not this email has paid for the course. The problem is you can't DM so many people at the same time. 300 people wanted to ver get verified at the same time. When you DM 300 people, Discord blocks you. And that's exactly what happened. That night, I sat with everyone in the course and we rewrote a bot that does not DM you and we wrote a more optimal way of solving this problem because my fundamentals are right. So, yes, everyone can code, but that's not a problem. If your fundamentals are right, you are competing now with the people whose fundamentals are right, who can use AI to code. You're not competing with the standard janta who can now code. Normal people who have never coded in their life can use ChatGPT to create a website, but it will break when it hits production. When it reaches scale, something or the other will break and they don't have any context of the code. They'll have to keep asking the AI to fix it and at some point or the other, AI might fail at least today. So from my personal experience, thinking from first principles is super important. And what I mean by this is, if you have you have ChatGPT and you have a problem, which is in my case, it was, I need to add verification to my Discord. You need to think from first principles. You need to think 
how should I solve this problem? And then you should ask ChatGPT to maybe code some sections. You should not ask it to do everything. It does not understand production scenarios yet. It does not understand you will get rate limited by Discord if you start DMing them. And hence the code that it gives you does not work. Okay. Hiring will go niche. Yes, there's a good chance less number of people get hired. And I'm going to exactly share what is happening in companies right now. I see this very closely. And I think this should have been the optimal way to hire right from the beginning. Companies just went crazy with the fundings they got. And they were competing with other companies for talent. And this was like a different game they were playing. No one was getting hired to work. People were fairly complacent yet getting paid a lot of money. And this was something that was bound to break at some point or another. Unoptimal scenarios break at some point and optimal scenarios come back. The whole bull run had a bunch of unoptimal scenarios where people were getting paid not for what they are doing, but out of FOMO, out of filling offices, out of showing that we're a big company and we have 30 engineers. That won't happen anymore. Hiring will go niche. That's already happening and extra load has been shed. People have been laid off. What should I do as a student, as someone who's recently tried to get into the market, as someone who's thinking of whether or not I want to get into tech? Should I just stop? Should I just go into a non-tech job? Should I do agriculture? What should I do? The answer is no. I'm not trying to discourage anyone. I'm just telling you where the market is going. You need to position yourself to be smart in that market. You need to be, if your a job is what your goal is, you need to be positioned very well for what's coming. Not for what happened. Yes, there was a lot of hiring before, but leave that away. Yes, people were getting hired without skills based on DSA or other form of factors. People were the companies were competing for talent and a competitor company. If I am one ed tech, I'll try to get talent from the other company just out of FOMO. That won't happen anymore. Things need to change. And this thing I've called the Zeroda philosophy, I think will become super important. This is something I've seen in a few companies, including Zeroda. And I think this is how every company will hire. The hiring metric is, or like the hiring philosophy is, we don't need a lot of people. We don't need to fill offices. We don't need to have a very big engineering team. Zerda is an application that makes 2000 crore in revenue every year. They have a 30 people or 32 people engineering team, which is fairly small. Compare that to heavily funded startups in India that don't make any money or are burning money that have 400, 300, 200 people engineering teams. That's unoptimal. And I think that will go away. In Zerda, from what I know, this is all external information from podcasts. Website is handled by one or two people end to end. Backend is handled by one or two people end to end. Same for mobile app. So it's not like web development has gone away. It's not like they don't need web development engineers, but they don't need too many. One person has enough context to build a website as big as Zerudha's website. Same for mobile app, same for backend. So what will be required or what will be changed would be, you will have people who are less of engineers, more of operators, and it's their job to make sure the website is up, the backend is up, the mobile app is up. Most probably not a lot of task delegation will happen not very big engineering teams will be made. People will be in charge of a very big subset of a problem, a very isolated problem, front-end, back-end, things like these. But, and it's their job to fix it if anything goes down. But that does not mean, so these jobs won't go away. Only thing is, you'll be operators plus engineers and it's your responsibility to make sure that the website is up. If anything goes down there, you're the one responsible. You don't have someone else to blame or whatever. This is a very nice lean engineering team which I've seen in the best startups that I work with or see in India or abroad. I feel this will become the norm. And so you should be prepared to work in an environment like this, which is, I wouldn't call it fast paced or like very aggressive. One person is enough to build a website and maintain it. Once a website is made, there's just like features you need to add, bug fixes and so on and so forth. And as long as you have enough context and you've written the code, you can make them fairly quickly. So there's nothing new here or there's nothing surprising here. This should have been the way things were made. Only companies are not optimal and for some reason or another, they felt the need to hire 50 engineers to build a website. Let's talk about things you can do if you want to move beyond development, web development. This is basic development, which is website, backend, mobile app. This is, as I said, decent and you can own projects end to end here and still be relevant in the market as long as tech businesses are relevant, which means Swiggy exists, Zomato exists, Zerda exists as platforms and people don't stop using tech products. You should be fine. Only Things will be niche, which means you'll be leading a lot of things versus working as a junior engineer or working with someone. If you don't want to do web development or if you want to move beyond it, basically means you want to make yourself more job ready or do niche or things that not a lot of people can do. That's how you sort of become more employable. These are a few examples I wanted to talk about. If you're working in YouTube or Hotstar, work on the live streaming system. That's the most difficult thing to build there. As I've said, anyone can build a website. It's ChatGPT can. Can they build live streaming systems? Maybe. 
can they build it at the scale of YouTube? Probably not. If you're working in the live streaming team, it could be very big. It might require re research engineers. Decent place to be. Probably very safe when it comes to layoffs. If you're working at Canva, it's a very front-end heavy application. So work in the front-end team. That's working on all the front-end optimizations to make sure you can do the things that Canva lets you do in a browser. Google Docs. It's a website. The smart thing there is, or the difficult thing there is, how you sync docs. How do people typing at the same time, how do they don't clash? How is the final output always the same even though people are editing the same document? Zerodha, the order book. The thing that allows and facilitates trading. Substack, the newsletter system. The thing that actually sends out the email that makes sure emails are not getting bounced. These are things not uh, that are not available on the internet. These are things people don't have courses for. These are things that are not taught or there are a lot of blog posts around. So these are things that are hard for you and an AI to understand, which is why I feel this is step two. Step one is this. Understand web development, be decent at it, maybe work a job as well. Step two is this. Move into more niche fields and become smarter. But again, like not, I'm not asking you to change the field yet. It's just more complicated backend systems or front-end systems, for example, here. What bet would I take today? I know this fairly well website development and everything. I've done this a few times. I know a few things from here very well. For example, live streaming. I've done that at a very big scale. What would I do next? And that's something I've been sort of struggling with for a while. And this is sort of my answer, I think, for now. I'll be working on two things, Web3 and low latency system. Why Web3 are here? This is the time to work on AI. I get it. The problem is if you keep chasing hype cycles, um, which is good. I've done that for many years. Uh, the problem is, if you keep chasing them, by the time you you become good at them, the hype cycle goes away. That's sort of what happened with me and Web3. By the time I understood it, the hype cycle went away and AI came into the picture. I worry if I start learning AI today, by the time I understand it enough to build a business or to get a job, the hype cycle will just go away. So it, it won't make a lot of monetary sense. Plus, personally, I'm more excited too about this technology for a thousand reasons, which is why is the answer that I arrived at right now. The reason for this is something different, which I will explain and share in a few few videos down the line. But these are the two things I am personally learning, hoping to get a job in, and what I'll do for the next, hopefully, six months to a year. What bets should you take? What should you be learning today? If you're a beginner, start with WebDev or DSA. Do the standard things. You can do them very fast now. I can tell you this. I, it took me two years of data structures and algorithms to become purple on code forces or go to like ICBC. You can do it much faster today. It took me two years of iterations to get into GSOC. I don't know if it's AI. I don't know if the next generation is smarter. But I'm seeing this in my course and generally that there is maybe a lot of information available. So people start to learn these things earlier than before. Maybe there are a lot of YouTubers promoting this. That's why. But generally, things are moving much faster than they used to. So you can easily get away with the basics. Once you have moved to, if you're in the second category, which is you already know web dev, you do a job somewhere, a startup or whatever, or you're thinking of getting a job, but you're decent at the month stack the Django stack, whatever, the standard web development technologies. Now, either become really good at one company, join a startup and become their 10x engineer, either working front and back end, whatever. Handle everything. Trust me, this will be how engineering will work. Not today, in, in a few months or years. Fairly bullish on this because I've seen this in many companies now, not one. Many big billion dollar companies with the right engineering metrics. Finally, if you're an advanced person already, which means you understand these very well, work in one of these companies, maybe, maybe not, depending on your taste. Think of moving to a different field no need to. You can do very well in general engineering startups and products. I would personally, if I was in that, if I was in your shoes, go into a niche field that might blow up very quickly. AI is obviously seeming like one, but take your bet. If I was you and if you're looking at this video and taking some advice or whatever, I would take a bet on AI or Web3 or whatever. I would at least try. The pace at which tech grew in the past 10 years, AI seems to be growing in like a few months. There's a good chance that how tech displaced everything, AI might so if I was in that position as you, which is a pretty lucrative position already, if you know all of these things and are building products like these in big companies, I would take that bet. You don't necessarily have to. But for person one and person two, these are the things I would do. That was the video. Just wanted to share this. Hopefully you got some context. Next video onwards, since first thing first, uh, I'm going to create a poll after this to understand what you want to learn. There will be low latency trading system, Web3, AI, system design, and a few more things. Click on what you want to learn. Just to let you know, I have most context in system design, building live streaming systems, and Web3. Other three, I am still learning. So pick one, and we will create long short videos now, which is like one hour, two hour videos explaining them. If you haven't seen my Web3 roadmap part one, that's the general approach I want to take while teaching, which is 30 minutes of rant and 30 minutes of doing an assignment and then some extra assignment at the very end. Let me know which one of these you want to learn. And the second thing is, the next set of videos are, I already explained this. It's going to be long short videos from now on, making sure 
we're actually learning and then few hype videos here and there cool that's all for the video i'll see you in the next one bye